we're just going to get started then here. Whoever did not put it in their uh, calendar and make time for it, well, we'll just have to watch the replay. So we'll touch on a few housekeeping things before we get started here. Lesson three, uh, I'm going to be doing on Sunday this week. Uh, it's going to be at the same time at 8 p.m. UTC. I've got to travel on Monday. I've got a flight that'll be going on during that time. So we'll do it Sunday, which should be fine because this lesson should not take you very much time to complete once we finish. Uh, very easy one. All right, so BitMart and NFTs. I mentioned this yesterday for those of you on the call, but yeah, as everybody knows, we did delay the BitMart launch. I'm really happy about that with how market conditions have gone. It just wouldn't make sense. Trading volume is so low. We really kind of miss out on the hype that we could have with launching BitMart in that down market. So again, we're going to uh, hold off on that. Uh, for anybody who saw Kyle's tweet earlier, we're really focused on making sure we take that measured approach. This team is very experienced. They've been here before, got a lot of experience on other big projects, things like that. So we spend our dollars wisely. We don't do things for the sake of doing it. We make sure that we're doing it at the right time. Okay. NFTs, same kind of thing with BitMarks. Doesn't make sense to do it right now. We want to make sure we can catch all the hype and everything we can when the market turns around. And so we hold off on those. We'll have uh, some more updates and details as things progress. Next thing, live your life, guys. So the market's down. It really stinks. I know people are hurting. Everybody's, everybody's bag is down. Everybody's investments are down. So, you know what? It's one of those times where you just got to live your life. It's uh, summer here in the U.S. Weather is finally starting to get warm where I'm from. So I'm planning on spending time doing some photography. I got a new drone. I'm going to spend some time flying that. I'm just big into baseball. So I'm going to be helping him with that because that was my sport growing up. So go live your life, guys. A lot of great things that you can be doing with your time. A lot of fun that you can be having that doesn't involve watching all these red chart come back when things turn around. And that's also the wonderful, beautiful thing about this whole that swap ecosystem or part of the base case strategy, it really allows you to set and forget. You, know, you follow the strategy, you let it go. It keeps building for that long-term gain. Right now we are seeing some short-term pain here. Kind of underline that in red, short-term pain. But that's part of being in a new market. That's part of being one of the first in a new industry, it happened. You know, if you look back through history, anytime there's been a big disruption, there is that volatility, there's up and down. Uh, you know, great series to watch, let's go live your life, is Super Pumped, which shows the progression of Uber, the start of Uber. And you'll notice throughout that series, every time like things went up and good, they hit a roadblock that could have killed them. what they do? They persevered. You know, they found a way, they figured it out. All right. And now Uber's everywhere. They can get a ride. You can get your groceries. You can get pharmacy pickups now. Like all these crazy things. And it was only because they persevered. You know, they didn't get down. They decided that they were going to find a solution. And that's what they did. Can so I, can I, can I, can I, that long-term gain. Like anybody who is a uh, early investor in Uber made a ton huh? of money, huh? even um, the founder, I always Nugget, forget Nugget his name, there. but like, you know, he uh, got ousted uh, from his company and he still made tens of millions, hundreds of billions, maybe even over a billion people are talking. I don't hear that. So let's switch over and make sure, oh, let's see. Turn the noise suppression. All right, is this better? Are we still hearing some feedback? <laughs> all right hopefully that's better now if you guys all right if you guys hear anything anything still i'll try to figure it out could mean by my buddy upstairs on another call i think it's now it's good all right perfect perfect yeah so just finish up 
looking for the long-term gains here. If you're trying to play the short-term stuff, you're gambling. Kyle's mentioned this before. We're not trying to gamble here. If you want to be a day trader, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of, a lot of emotional whiplash. Not really for me. I like to minimize my stress as much as possible. That's why I'm really bullish on Night Swap, Marvin, Guard, all of this stuff, because I know there's lots of long-term potential for it. So let's uh, dive into lesson two here. And build your money printer. Yes, we're gonna be talking about how to actually start setting up your staking. I'm gonna give you guys a little quick rundown of how I'm using Night Swap right now. I don't know if we're having duck races today. That's uh, Queen Monique thing. And I think she was traveling somewhere today. So I'll see if I can talk her into doing uh, some duck races next time. All right, now, let's get into a lesson one recap here, all right? Trying to optimize for enough, right? Enough is what we want. We don't want more. Chasing more for the sake of more, you're gonna get wrecked every time because the only way that you can figure out how much more you can get is to lose everything. Uh, Nick talks about this all the time in his videos. The only way to see how far and how fast you can run is to die. All right, and we don't want that. So we don't want more, we want enough. We want to have enough to live the life that we want. Now, whatever life that is, so it's not for me to decide and that's not for you to compare to anybody else. Whatever that life is for you, whatever things that you enjoy and want to spend your time doing, that is what we're optimizing for. That's why that first lesson, you know, it was all about figuring out your FU number. You want to know how much money you need to have so that you can say no to anything you want. If you didn't watch the video in the first lesson from the Gambler movie, highly recommend checking it out. It's really great. It always pumps me up. All right, next thing. We are building assets that create assets. That's the that's the great thing about how this whole night nice swap ecosystem works. And you're gonna see that later on in this lesson. It's exactly how we can take our asset Marvin. If you guys are holders here, you shall have some Marvin that you can start staking. And that's gonna create night. That's gonna create a whole new asset. Yeah, also I can't spell apparently, so I'll throw that in there. All right. So the goal is to have assets that create assets, all right? And that's why we also need a macro belief, whether that's Marvin, whether that's Guard, whether that's Bitcoin, Ethereum. Again, yeah. it could be anything. Well, that's the great thing about this strategy. It's agnostic. You could start rolling your profits into real estate. It, it could be another business. It's whatever you want to be. If you're close to what your number is, maybe you're dropping it into a more, you know, stable coin, BUSD, something like that. Whatever it is, you have to have that macro belief, right? Audio recording and video recording now. All right. Let me share my screen again. Okay, I think that's working. Cool. Can you guys just drop in the main channel? Let me know that you can see my screen again. I've got the L1 recap up and make sure you can uh, hear me here. I know, where is everybody? But hey, if, if they don't wanna build wealth, that's on them. We'll, we'll move on, we'll get rich and everybody else can go do their thing. All right, I think I, I think we lost it right around in the macro belief. I'll tie in the first part when I upload the recording, but yeah, just to keep moving on. Again, we need that macro belief, whether it's Marvin, Guard, Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever it might be. You got to have that. You got to have something that you check your decision making against. And we'll get more into that in one of the future lessons here. But the main point of this one is to actually get you guys staking, using guards, start printing money. It's a great time to do it with the market down and start accumulating a free bag here for when everything takes off again.
All right. So next thing, don't kill your golden goose. One of the things we're going to be touching on here is how you can invest wisely, fund your base case without having to put your life savings in there or, or put your rent money or anything like that in so that if the market does go down, if things do go bad, you're not uh, having to pull things out at a loss. You know, that's the last thing we want. We want you being <clears throat> in the market as long as possible without any rent any interruptions. So I'll be showing you guys some easy ways that you can keep funding your base case. All right, because that's exactly it. I want to extend our time horizon. We'll talk more about that later on in the lesson again here, because that's super important. Time in the market is one of the most important things. All right, where you're at does not matter. Just start, even if you only have $50 or $100, even $20 to put in right now. Whatever you can responsibly afford to invest, start, start, because the time in the market builds. And I'll show you how that compounding really starts to take off, even if you don't have much to begin with, okay? So lesson two. Three main things we're going to be covering here. The real reason you're getting wrecked, funding your base case, and compounding your compounding. And this is, this is where you're going to see the power of the night swap. I'll show you what I'm doing. All right. So beating self-sabotage. Now, that's the reason why so many people get wrecked in this market. I've been guilty of it, too. I've made bad decisions before with my money. We've all been there. And a lot of that is because our beliefs about money are wrong. The way that a lot of us were raised to think about money is just not correct. And because of those beliefs, because of those things that were instilled with us, it makes us do really silly things with our money. And a lot of it's subconscious. It's a lot of stuff that we don't quite realize uh, until it's brought out into the open. All right. We're going to get into some new money beliefs. We're going to talk about some new ways to think about money that will keep you from making those silly mistakes over and over again. And in the beginning, a lot of that is going to revolve around protecting yourself from yourself. That's this beautiful thing about this whole base case strategy. It protects yourself from making those emotional decisions in the moment when we don't have the logical part of our brain firing. Okay. And the let your money on fire mentality. So that's a fun one that was a belief I adopted early that's really helped me out. And we'll get more into that in a second. So the emotional money mindset. All right. Your things end up owning you. So one of the things that really uh, gets a lot of people is they, they've fell into this marketing hype where... We have to have more stuff. You have to buy that newest gadget, newest TV, newest iPhone, newest computer, whatever it might be. And then your things end up owning you, whether you have a really high car payment, mortgage payment, rent payment things. And that causes us to be very emotional about our money. Like now we can't make good money decisions when we're maxed out on paycheck to paycheck here. And most of our money is going to pay the immediate things that we have right now to keep them. All right. So it makes it really difficult when times get tough to be able to sit there and say, Hey, it's okay. I can get through this. All right. So you really want to remove as much of that emotion as possible. And here's the thing. Money is made up. Really? That's a weird thing to say, but money is completely made up. If you look back through history, if you study the history of money and the history of economics, you'll see that the representation of money has changed a lot over years. There's something called a rye stone that was like the original Bitcoin almost. Really cool story. I definitely recommend looking it up. You know, we've gone through periods of time where the barter and trade system was our form of money where value was, hold on guys, we got, uh, we got someone here not being nice in the chat. So we're gonna pause that for a while. 
から。All right, sorry. Trying to、uh, keep up with the chat and do this, but so money is made up. It's really just a store of value here, okay? So it's not this thing that's、uh, scarce. And, like, that's the other thing. Money doesn't grow on trees. And you heard that a lot as a kid. I heard that as a lot, kid. All right. And where is it? There we go. That's what I want. Yeah, so money isn't scarce. You know, it's everywhere. And it just changes over time of what that value is. Right now, it's Dollars, paper money. It's going to numbers in a program. Before it was who had a fur pelt. You know, it was who had these pretty stones that they could trade, things like that. So start thinking of money as. Well, we'll get into that in the, in the future, please. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. So money isn't scarce. You can always find more money. And I'll show you how you're going to do that a little bit later on. All right. This one, I think, is probably the biggest one for most people. I definitely know growing up in the area I lived, part of the, part of the US I lived, we had a lot of this negative thought around people who were wealthy, that they were evil, that they were mean, that they did bad things to become wealthy. And this is not true. That is not true. And because we were made to believe that building wealth, Was evil. We have this subconscious need to get rid of our money. We think that if we keep accumulating this money, that we're going to be evil and we're going to turn evil. And that's simply not true. We need to change that story. And you need to start telling yourself a new story. So that building wealth is a lot. It's, there's a lot of good things that you can do if you have wealth. You, know, you can build up your hometown, you can help donate to charity, you can. You know, create new programs for you know, your kid's school. You, know, you can take your friends on vacation, whatever it is、um, that you want to do. Like, wealth will help you do that more and do it better. And whether it's used for good or evil is entirely on you. And I'm guessing everybody in here is a good person. Pretty much, we get some haters every once in a while. But if you're on this, if you're showing up for this, I assume you're a good person. And you're the kind of person that I want to see get wealthy because I think you're going to do a lot of good in the world. All right. And again, going back to the more versus enough, I'm going to touch on this a lot over this, probably almost every lesson, because again,、um, marketing is my main background. I've studied marketing, I've studied the history of marketing. And it was after World War II that marketing really became this thing and this idea of. You need more stuff. You need more stuff. You have to have your identity tied to stuff and things. And it's created this mentality of more. And we don't need that. We just need enough. And we need to spend time and think about what is enough for us? What is exactly the life we want to live? What is actually going to make us happy? And again, go back to lesson one if you haven't done that. There's some great questions in there to help you figure out what enough is. And how to figure out what you actually value. Is it more time with your family? Is it vacations with your friends? Is it vacations with your partner? Things like that. Okay, so what we want is enough. That's it. So you have to know enough is for you. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. You can always go for more and more. All right, now let's look at some of the new money beliefs that we want to have. The first, you are worthy of success. All right, internalize this belief. You are worthy of success. So many people have this subconscious negative view of themselves where they don't feel like they're worthy. We've been given all these marking messages that we're not fit enough, we're not beautiful enough, we're not skinny enough, we're not tall enough, we're not this or that or the other thing. All right, but you are worthy. You are worthy of success. You are inherently worthy of this. There's nothing that you need to do. You were born worthy of this. Okay, I know that sounds like a little, might sound a little woo woo to some people, but it's a really powerful thing. It's a really powerful belief.、Um, and the Night Swap guys, they've got a really high level psychiatrist, doctor. Um, who talks about this? He's worked with many Olympic athletes, high-level people, 
and it really hones in on this of you are inherently worthy. All right, so I want you to start reframing this and internalizing this belief. All right, second thing, money is a tool. And that kind of goes back to money is made up. It's not anything but a tool. And it's a tool to get you the things you need. And a great way to think about that is don't buy a drill if you need to cut down a tree, all right? You know, don't use the wrong tool. Don't have the wrong tool. All right. Money is the same way. Don't buy things you don't need. Don't buy things you don't actually want. And that's going to give you more, more money to live life that you actually want. It's going to keep you from investing too much into something and getting wrecked when the markets go down. All right. Power of extreme ownership. This is uh, an idea popularized by Jocko Willink. He was a Navy SEAL officer in the early stages of the Iraq Iran War. And this guy is fantastic when it comes to reframing, taking ownership of your life. You know, and this is gonna be hard for some people to hear, but your bank account is equal to the choices you made, which is based on your values, okay? So these things all kind of go together. You know, if you haven't saved up a lot of money, it's because of certain choices you make. You, know, you are responsible for those choices, and those choices are based a lot on the values. You know, that goes back to what I was talking about up here with being emotional about money, thinking money is evil, thinking money is scarce, different things like that. You know, those values, oops, I actually want to go backwards this way. All right, your values dictate your choices, which dictates your bank account, which dictates your life. All right. There. So that's why I've been spending so much time, the first lesson, this lesson, and all the future lessons, really talking about values, really digging into how you think about this stuff, because that's so important. You have to start from first principles here and make sure your values are in line with the life you want to live, because then it becomes easy to make the right choices. It becomes really easy to make those choices, which means it becomes really easy to grow your bank account and really easy to live the life you want. Okay. That's why I'm focusing so much time on this, guys, and I can't tell you how important it is. You don't have to take my word for it. Go hop in the Night Swap ecosystem, the Wolf Den Discord. You'll see they talk about a lot. Read their Medium articles. Watch the videos with Nick, their doctor, um, psychiatrist. I can never remember his name. They all talk about this. So internalize this. Focus on this, all right? Now, protecting you from yourself. Practice makes permanent. This is a skill. This is something that you can build, but it's going to take work. It's going to take practice. All right. It's going to take you no-go exercises. These are great ones. You know, we're in an economy right now with all the technology where we need a dopamine hit anytime we want just by opening up our phone, going on Telegram, going on Discord, going on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, what, whatever it is. And it's super important to practice no-go exercise. When you feel that urge to pick up your phone and check that notification, don't. Tell yourself here, no, just this time, no. I don't, and put your phone down, go do something else. Go read a book, go take a walk, do something else. Because it's a skill, it's a muscle that needs to be built over time. So keep building it and keep working on it. And the more that you can practice some of these no-go exercises and going against your initial reaction, the easier it's all going to make this, all right? I want you thinking better. Again, when you start thinking better, you start thinking about beliefs, you, know, you start thinking about values, and you let those guide you. You, know, you stop being a victim of reaction, of emotion. You know, when you think better, you can increase that gap between that emotional response and that logical thought. And that's really what we want you to do. So we want you to think better. So a lot of these lessons are going to be focused around how I think about this stuff, how Nick thinks about this stuff, how the rest of the team in the Night Swap and the Wolf Den thinks about this stuff. All right. 
because we want you all thinking better because if you're thinking better, you're going to be more successful investors. You're going to be better investors. And that's going to be great for everybody. It's going to make the Marvin project go better. It's going to make everybody hold when they know they should be holding, buying when they should be buying. All right. So we want you to think better. I'm going to keep helping you guys think better as long as you're willing to come for the ride. Again, it's your life to live how you want. I can't force you to do anything. All I can do is provide you the information, the tools to think better and live better. And whether you want to join us or not, it's up to you. Follow your strategy. You know, this is the one of really important ways to protect you from yourself, especially in the beginning, especially in the beginning when those emotional reactions and responses are still a little bit stronger. All right, so that's why lesson one was all about finding your FU number. This lesson, we're pretty soon gonna get into kind of building that strategy. I'm gonna show you what my strategy is right now and I'll give you guys an idea, all right? And if you just follow your strategy, the strategy that you laid out when you're not emotional, when you're not worried about um, the market going down, up, whatever it is, it's gonna be much easier to plan that out and just follow it. That's all you have to do. You know, you just write down, hey, every day I do this, every week I do this, that's it. So then you can go live your life. You can go do all the other fun things you like to do. I'm guessing you all have hobbies, interests, passions, and things like that outside of crypto. So I hope so. It's good to be a well-rounded person. And if you don't, go find, go find some other hobbies. This is a great time of year for half the world to have some fun, do some things, get outside. It's a great time to not watch the charts not look at the market because the market's going to do what it's going to do. People are going to do what they're going to do. We want you guys to be better than that. We want you guys to not succumb to those emotional responses when the market goes down, when bad projects get exposed, things like that, and hurt everybody else. So if you follow your strategy, then you can focus on living your life and doing all the other fun things that you want to do. Create constraints. So this one is going to be very individual for you and your personality. If you have, if you want to help or need help on that, please feel free to drop it in the question form that we link in with this lesson here. The creating constraints can be so powerful for protecting you from yourself. Like for me, I only check the chart once a week with some of the with some of the projects that I like and I'm interested. In, might be monthly. As you build out your base case more, there's going to be certain assets. You may only check quarterly. If you believe Bitcoin is going to be your macro belief and you think in 10 years that's really going to go up, there's no point in checking Bitcoin more than maybe once a year because it doesn't matter. All your strategy is buy as much Bitcoin as you can in the next 10 years. Buy as much Ethereum as you can in the next 10 years, whatever it is. So now you don't have to check the charts and you shouldn't check the charts. So then you don't need to get that emotional dopamine hit. Don't have that emotional response. It doesn't matter if it's down 20% this week or this month or this quarter, because over the course of the year, it's probably gonna be, I know we're in a pretty, pretty rough time at the moment, but if you look at the history of Bitcoin, it's been one of the best performing assets over the last 10 years. You know, it's been really volatile throughout that time. And if you look at it any day, any week, any month, see a lot of volatility, you might see something that would be like, oh God, I should sell, I should sell. But if you zoom out to that one year, three year, five year time frame, it's really gone up. I'm really happy I didn't sell. Okay. So to create those constraints. So another constraint I have is I have app blockers on my phone. So I don't go on social media after a certain time because I know myself, I know that I can get sucked into TikTok and stay up way too late. And then I'm tired the next day and I don't do the good things I need to do. All right, so I created that constraint. You know, I gave someone else that password so I couldn't get into it. So think about yourself. Think about how you act, how you react to situations and see what kind of constraints that you can come up with. And if you're struggling at all with that, please feel free to drop it in the question form and I'll see what I can do about helping come up with some ideas. All right, the let your money on fire belief. All right, this is my favorite one. So anytime I invest money, into anything, whether it's a business, whether it's a project, token, coin, anything like that, I believe that money is gone. I have the mentality that that is now lit on fire, completely gone, never see it again, okay? And I can do that because I don't invest more than what I'm willing to lose. I don't put my entire life savings 
into any one thing. I don't put too much where I can't pay my bills the next month. All right. So make sure that you're only investing what you can lose. All right. Only invest what you're willing to lose because it's already gone. Once you put into a business, an asset, the crypto market, it's gone. It doesn't matter like crypto right now, but I have just as many friends who have invested in a bad business deal and lost their money that way. The regular stock market, real estate, everything. All right. So you have to have that belief that it's already gone once you put it in there. And that gives you the freedom and that emotional freedom, that mental freedom to not worry about whether the market goes up or down because you have that long term belief that as we extend our time horizon. Yeah. If you invest all your money now, expecting a coin to 100 X, then in the next month or the next two months, if it doesn't, then you're screwed. No, but if you take say a hundred dollars and you invest it in there, knowing that in 10 years, it's going to thousand X, hundred X, something like that's much better, right? That's going to be a lot easier to stomach a 90% drop in bag in the short term. Cause everything goes up, everything goes down. Right. So if we can extend our time horizon by only investing what we can afford to lose in that short term, it's going to remove that emotional decision making. It's going to allow us to follow that strategy that we're putting together. It's going to allow us to have that macro belief, that long term 10 year plan for when we want to retire, you know. Okay. All right. So funding your base case. First off, you won't get rich by saving. All right. Depending on how you grew up and hearing about money. Yeah. You know, my parents were big on save, save, and you should save. You definitely should save. But the problem is saving is finite. All right. We're going to get into that in just a second. Next thing is how bad do you want it? You have to, you have to stop and think how bad do you really want this? And that's what we went into a lot in lesson one. That's why I asked those questions I did in lesson one to make sure um, you understand what it takes, what's going to, what you're going to have to do. We're going to have to sacrifice. We're going to have to work for to get that FU number. And I've got a bunch of side hustles down here that you can start today to help fund your base case. Um, and we'll get into that really soon. Saving is finite. All right. I need a quick water break here. Hold on. All right. So the reason you'll never get rich by saving is because you can only save so much. Let's say make $5,000 a month, right? Maybe your rent is a thousand. You know, spend another 500 on food. Miscellaneous bills are another thousand, you know, whatever it might be, but you get the point. There, there are certain base expenses that no matter what you do, you just cannot lower any more. You just only so low you can get. And if your uh, income always stays at that $5,000 mark, there's only so much you can be able to save every month. All right. So the goal should be make more money. All right. Making more money. It's so easy to make money today with the internet, with everything available to us. It's so much easier to make money than it ever has been before. Most of these side hustles that I'm going to tell you about require almost no startup capital. You don't have to spend 20,000, 50,000 or hundred thousand dollars to opening up a retail business or investing a bunch of money in inventory for something. It's so easy to start a side hustle and start making money without having to put much money into it. Okay. So there's really no excuse for you not to make more money. Okay. The internet connects just about everybody. I know there's parts of the world that don't have it yet, but if you're here, clearly you do. So there are ways that you can make money and start funding your base case so you aren't putting your life savings or your rent money into projects. So do you have a budget? It's still a good idea to have a budget. It's still a good idea to know 
how much you need every month to pay your bills to make sure that you cover that, to make sure that you aren't overspending on crypto investments, business investments, food, whatever. So do have a budget. So do have an idea of what, how much money you need in the bank every month. Don't spend money you don't have. We're seeing this right now. I don't know how closely everybody's been following the Celsius stuff. Yeah, you know, I've been hearing a bit about it. I need to dig in a little bit more. They're in trouble because they were spending money they didn't have. You know, they were over leveraged with the money that people were giving them. And you can see how that's coming back to bite them. And it sucks because it affects everybody else. It makes all of our lives worse. So don't be like those people. Don't add to that, especially if you have family, if you have people that count on you, don't spend money you don't have. Don't put others in a bad situation because you made a mistake, okay? And a really good philosophy that I've adopted to help curb my spending, to help really make me aware of the money I'm spending is, I always tell myself, I'll buy it tomorrow. If I'm at the store, if I see something I, I want, search around on Amazon or something like that, hey, I'll buy it tomorrow. You know, come back tomorrow. Hey, I'll buy it tomorrow. Hey, I'll buy it tomorrow. I just keep kicking that can down the road saying, hey, I'll buy it tomorrow. And 90% of the time, I forget about it. I have so many things in my Amazon wish list that I've forgotten about that I haven't really actually needed. They've saved me thousands upon thousands of dollars just because I said buy it tomorrow. All right, so keep that in mind. If you, if you are an impulse buyer, just tell yourself, hey, I'll buy it tomorrow. All right. Let's see what that gets you. Now, how bad do you want it? All right. This is a really important thing. If you went through the first lesson, we talked a lot about being aware of what you might have to sacrifice, what you'd have to give up to get to that FU number. There's very different sacrifices that you have to make and very different amounts of work that you have to put in if your FU number is $5 million versus $100 million versus a billion. All right, so it's important to be really conscious of that. You know, make sure your efforts are in line with your desires. If you have an FU number that requires you put $100 in a month versus a thousand, you know, what's easier to come up with? Are you willing to put, put the work in to make an extra thousand dollars a month to fund your base case? Yes, no, maybe so. It's totally up to you, that's totally personal. But be aware of it, it makes no sense to have a base case strategy that requires you to put a thousand, two thousand, or five thousand dollars a month in when you're not willing to put the work in for it. Okay. Now, so again, this won't work unless you do. I know this is the last thing anybody wants to hear. They don't want to hear you have to do work. Everybody is hoping for the easy button, but I can promise you it does not exist. Talk to any successful person and they'll let you know that it's not easy, that work has to be put in. You know, look at how many lottery winners end up broke within a couple of years. You know, they didn't put the work in, they made millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, and within a year it's gone. Just gone. All right. So you have to put the work in. Part of that is putting stop putting your future in someone else's hands. That's why we want you guys to think better. We want you. We want your future to be in your own hands. We want you to make decisions based on your own knowledge, your own research. We don't want you to just FOMO into things because you see a green candle. We don't want you just to FOMO into things because you saw some celebrity talking about this or some influencer saying that. We want to make sure that you have the skills, the tools, and the knowledge to be able to actually go and look at an investment and properly do your research and vet it and make sure that the tokenomics makes sense, the business model makes sense, the utility has a real world application, that the team has the experience behind them to make this thing happen. Like those are all so important things that you have to know for yourself because otherwise you're always gonna be relying on someone else and you're gonna be relying, hope that they did the proper research, hope that they weren't just paid to talk about this thing and they have no idea about it. If they're only looking out for their own best interest, we want to make sure that you are able to look out for your own best interests. All right. And one of the things that I have heard over and over again through my entrepreneurial career, as I have talked to different friends and things like that about starting their own businesses, 
they don't have time. Every place says they don't have time right now. And I say that's not true. We can all find more time. Now, except for very, very rare circumstances. I know some people are maxed out, but 99% of you can find more time. And if you don't believe me, go into your phone usage stats. Look how much time you're spending each week, each day on apps that don't actually do anything for you. How much time are you scrolling through Instagram? Facebook, TikTok, any of those things. That's why I started putting app blockers on my phone. I checked and I embarrassed to admit this, you know, I spent two hours a day on TikTok. It was terrible. Sometimes three or four. And I just was like, oh my God, the things that I could have been doing with that time. I put those app blockers on and now I spent the time researching new things I'm excited about. That's given me the time and the freedom to put in somewhere around 40 hours of research into this whole Night Swap Guard ecosystem and the Wolf Den that we've been involved in. I really learned a ton about that. So you can find more time. I really need to challenge you to find more time that you can start doing your own research, learning these things yourself, okay? All right, let's get into some side hustles here. So, these are all things you could easily start doing today, almost no matter where you are in the world. Again, there's always exceptions. I don't want to say everyone can do all these things, any of these things, but the large majority of you, if you're willing to put in the work, willing to take your life into your own hands, take responsibility for uh, your own wealth building, these are things you can do right now. I started cutting lawns when I was 12 years old, all right? And I did that for, gosh, about 12 years. You know, when I was younger, like I was making more money than any other kid in middle school and high school. And it's a really easy thing to start. Start in your own neighborhood. Find older people in your neighborhood. See if you can cut their lawns. You know, if you don't have your own lawnmower, ask to borrow theirs. Charge a little bit less to use their lawnmower. Save up that money, buy your own. Start to expand. That's what I did. We used my dad's lawnmower for a while. Got more money, bought my own lawnmower. I got my dad to let me use his car that had trailer hitch on it. Had a, got a little trailer so I can now start going to do other people's lawns that further away, okay? It's pretty easy. Cutting a lawn doesn't take a lot of work. Benefit of that too, you can listen to podcasts, audiobooks, different things like that, uh, YouTube videos to grow, uh, grow your knowledge base. Yard work, landscaping, people hate weeding, you know, people hate digging holes for trees, flowers, whatever. Go talk to people in your neighborhood. Again, house cleaning, dog walking, sitting, car detailing. This is another one that I did a lot during middle school and high school. This is a super easy one. Washing, waxing, cleaning out the inside of people's cars, vacuuming, taking a little bit of like armor all clear, making it look nice. That's a great one. Babysitting, nanny, house manager, meal prep, cooking. Like if you're good at cooking, if you like cooking, so many people are getting to meal prep stuff. Uh, real estate investor assistant. I have a lot of friends that do uh, real estate investing. They're always looking for people in different cities that can go walk through a home, take pictures for them. I'm going to pay them 25, 50 bucks, different things like that. There's so many opportunities out there. If you... Uh, really want to start uh, with some easy stuff, Uber, Instacart, go shopping for people, pick people's stuff up, different things like that. If you live in an apartment complex, offer to do people's laundry, you know, walk around, charge them, see how much your cleaner charges per pound of clothes, do a 10, you know, 15%, 20%, 30% upcharge and go wash it for them. All right. If you have an eye for furniture, knickknacky stuff, antiques, things like that. You can flip items. You can go to garage sales. You can go to antique stores, thrift stores. Check out the items there. See what they're selling for on eBay and flip stuff that way. You, know, so you have tons of opportunities and none of this stuff really takes hardly any money to start. So you can pretty much do all of these with no money or maybe like $100 in supplies. So there's really no excuse not to start funding your base case using something like this, okay? Now, if you have a few, you know, if you have some skills, I don't know what uh, people's backgrounds are and things like that, but if you have some kind of skills, whether you're good at 
Excel spreadsheets, scraping data, social media posting. Maybe you are creative and you're really good with Canva or stuff like that. It's a lot of freelancing opportunity. I mean, set up an account on Fiverr, Upwork. Those are two really big ones. Like, just go to Fiverr. Like, seriously, when you're done with this, go to Fiverr. Look at all of the different things that people are getting paid to do and see if you have any of those skills. See if there's anything that you can do to start making money and go create a profile. It, again, doesn't take you anything but a few minutes of your time. If you're not willing to spend that time to fund your base case, can't really help you then. Okay. Tutoring. If you're a bookworm, if you love math, if you love science, things like that, see if there's a uh, Kids in high school, you can tutor. Kids in college, you can tutor. Whatever it might be, you know, there's always parents out there who really want to give their kids an edge. And you know, if you're book smart in that way, start tutoring. Virtual assistants. Uh, this is another great one. But virtual assistants are becoming more and more prevalent, more and more important for a lot of these online businesses. And again, like Fiverr and Upwork, you'll see a lot of those postings and things like that. So you can be a virtual assistant, or you might do support for someone. You might be cleaning up a database. You might be responding to emails. Who knows? But a lot of opportunities there, all right? And if you feel really ambitious, you look for like more advanced skills that people pay for. See if you have them or if you can learn them. But developers and programmers right now, especially Web3 stuff, like they, there's so many open opportunities for that. All right. If you have uh, a desire to get more technical, you like computers, you like that kind of stuff. There are plenty of programs out there that will don't charge you until you get a job. There's other ones that like Code Academy. There's a lot of colleges that put their courses online for free. No, you're not going to get a degree, but you're going to get the skills. If you put the time in, follow the lessons, you'll learn the same things that people do uh, that attend a college and most businesses right now, especially the online ones, especially the ones in crypto and web three, they don't really care necessarily about the good degree. They just care that you're a good coder. If you can show them that you're a good coder, that's all that matters. But there's tons of different things out there. YouTube is um, full of people teaching different things. So go look for some skills that people pay for and what you can do, what you're good at, what you're interested in. So many opportunities, all right? Yeah, get a second job. You know, if the uh, entrepreneurial thing isn't really for you, that's totally fine. I have a lot of friends out there who have absolutely no interest in being an entrepreneur. Like, it's just not the stress they want. So go get a second job. You know, especially in, I can't speak for the rest of the world, but in America, we are, it's not everybody's desperate for workers, nursing assistants and old folks home or group home. If you like being around people, if you like helping people, that is an incredibly rewarding job. I was a nursing assistant in my um, younger years when I was going to nursing school. Love that job. I had so much fun at that job. Server, bartender. If you like the food industry, if you like being around like people our age, go find a job there. Go find a job in retail. There's so many jobs out there. And again, it's going back to living your life. Instead of spending four hours in the evening on your computer looking at charts, freaking out and getting all emotional, go get a job, make some money that you can fund your base case, follow your strategy. Every paycheck for this job just goes straight into my base case. You know, get your normal job where you can pay your bills and the second job, straight into your base case. So easy, so many opportunities there. And before anybody gets all uppity, let me say, check your ego, all right? If anybody is upset with any of these suggestions, asking you to do your work, I say check your ego. All right. There are so many things that I do on the side to make a little bit extra money here and there when I want to. And I'm not above any of it. Like I still every once in a while, I've got a few neighbors around my parents. I'll still go detail their car once or twice a year. I'm not above it. I'll take the extra money. If I got a few extra hours on a Saturday or Sunday morning, Absolutely. I get to be outside. Yeah, I get to do something that's fun. Like it's really satisfying for me to clean up a car. All right. So no one is above any of this. All right. And it really comes down to what are you willing to sacrifice and what are you willing to do? All right. That's it. That's 
all this is about. How bad do you want it? Are you willing to put in the work and do the things to make it happen? I'm like I do a little bit of photography and video on the side. It's been a passion of mine since, oh gosh, I was a kid, like five, six. You know, I took my mom's camera. I went through all of her pictures for years and years. And I did all this stuff. I was a photographer's assistant for a while. I did all the grunt work and the junk work and things like that. That was not fun. And like, uh, there was one photo shoot I went on where I got to stand in freezing cold water for a half an hour holding a boat just to make sure it didn't move so the photographer get the right shot. All right, I put in that time. I ask the questions, I pay attention to what they're doing. And now I get, people love my photography and I get asked pretty often, oh, can I pay you to come do a photo shoot for me? Can I pay you to follow me around and do a video for me? What are you willing to do? What are you willing to do? But for years, I put in that time without really getting paid or making any money. It's just what are you willing to do? Stop and ask yourself that. Have a serious conversation with yourself. Just ask what you're willing to do, okay? Because what you're willing to do is going to directly influence how much of wealth you can create, how close you can get to that FU number. All right. Now, zoom out. Okay, here we go. Last part before we get into the really fun stuff. Compound your compounding, all right? Let's take one more drink of water here. Now, this is the real power of this whole night swap ecosystem, what the Wolf Den is doing, what this base case strategy is doing. And I really want to make sure you guys pay real close attention to this because this idea of compounding is really hard for people to understand. It's really hard for our human brain to understand the real power of what all of this is, okay? And... First off, start wherever you are. I can't tell you how important it is to start wherever you are. I talk to my friends all the time about getting a crypto, even if it's just $20, $50, $100. And they're all like, oh, I just wish, I feel like I should have more because you know, like, if it does a 10X or a 4X or something, it's really not a lot of money. It's more money than you had. Like it's getting you closer. So it doesn't matter how much you have. All right. The thing that matters the most is time and market. So if you look at uh, Warren Buffett, guy's not that great an investor. If you look through his history, if you study Warren Buffett, he is not the best investor that ever lived. There's several investors who their returns just crushed his, but he's been investing for 80 years. He's been investing for 80 years, you know? And I think something like 90% of his wealth came after the age of 50, and 99% of his wealth came after the age of 60 or 70. So that time and market is so incredibly important. Nothing else will beat time in the market. So wherever you are, start now, okay? And of course, DCA responsibly. You will never time the market better than you can DCA. Dollar cost average. Pick up that second job, do that side hustle, $100 every week, $100 every month. $200 every paycheck, whatever you can put in responsibly, do that. And again, I say responsibly because you want to stay in the market. You don't want to have a down market and have to freak out and pull everything out as soon as things start going down because then you're going to be selling at a loss and you're not going to be in the market. So DCA responsibly. Let it build. Let it build. This is the power of compounding, okay? I'm about to show you with the, the base case strategy of like the power of letting all of this build and a couple of great examples. All right, one penny, start with one penny on day one. And it doubles every day for 30 days. How much do you think you would have at the end of 30 days? All right, how much do you think you would have? Think about that for a second. So next one, rice on a chessboard. And double each square. There's just 64, I think 64 squares on a ch chessboard. Okay. So you take one single grain of rice on the first square and it doubles every square. How much do you think you have? I guarantee none of you are going to be close, unless you've heard this before. Okay. Well, let me show you. So for the pennies, at 
the end of 30 days, if you started with one penny and it doubled every day, you would end with five million three hundred sixty-eight thousand dollar three hundred and sixty-eight thousand seven hundred and nine dollars and twelve cents. Isn't that insane to think about? One penny. Started with one penny. One penny. Oops. Can't spell today. One penny. Three days. That's the power of compounding. Granted, we aren't going to quite see uh, returns like that that quickly. That's, that's pretty insane. But it does give you a great idea of how powerful compounding can be. The rice analogy, this one's even crazier. One grain of rice, double. Every, every square inch chessboard would end up with 210 billion tons. And for uh, those of you that are in uh, other parts of the world, I don't know if you do tons, but a ton is 2,000 pounds, which I don't even know what that uh, that is. Let's see, 2,000 pounds to kilograms. So it's about 907 kilograms. 907 kg, and I can't spell again, I'm putting extra stuff. All right, so isn't that crazy? Is that not crazy? 210 billion, like, that's heavy. That's a lot, that's a lot. And that's the power of compounding, all right? That's exactly what this night swap ecosystem is gonna be doing. So start now, let it build, and most importantly, don't kill your golden goose. Don't kill it. Well, that's Marvin. I've invested heavily in Marvin. <sighs> Early on, I've got a lot of Marvin that's uh, printing me money in the Night Swap ecosystem. I'm never going to touch that. The only thing I'm going to do is add more BNB to take more of my Marvin. I'm not going to kill that golden goose because that's printing me money. All right, so don't kill your golden goose. Don't take money out to buy things you don't want or don't over invest where you can't pay the rent next month and you have to take your money out. Don't kill your golden goose, just let it build. Because when you're playing with house money, that's a beautiful thing with how this works. Is everything I'm making for my golden goose here, all of those APLI rewards are house money now. So everything else I stick it into, it doesn't matter if the market goes up or down because it's, it's free money. I could care less if one of my assets goes down 90% for a month, three months, six months. That's totally fine with me because it's house money. It's not money that's coming out of my pocket. Yeah, so marking conditions won't matter. You just keep reinvesting it. You know, it just becomes this ever increasing flywheel, all right? So marking conditions won't matter if you let your golden goose live and keep laying eggs for you. All right, one more drink break here. And then we're getting the real fun stuff. So this next part, I'm going to go over what my current base case strategy is, how I am looking at the night swap ecosystem, you know, how I'm doing things. But of course, I do need to say, it's not financial advice. It's very important. You know, I want you to think for yourselves. My examples are just to try to help make this stuff tangible for you. So you guys can have an idea of how all this can work together. And it's really important that you do your own research, look into the Wolf Den, the Night Swap ecosystem. I'll tell you why I'm bullish on them at the end. But I really want to make sure that you guys are thinking for yourself, spending the time and researching. You know, the whole point of this education series is pull some of those um, higher level ideas and things that they're talking about down into some really tangible forms that you can get started with right now and give you that base knowledge we can really learn and run and go faster, okay? But if you do decide to invest more in night guard, anything like that, I really want to encourage you guys to do your own research on the project, the utility, the team, and things like that. They have so much good stuff on there. Let me take my drink break here and we'll dive in. All right, all right, all right. 
So start the Marvin BNB pair. You know, like I said, I invested a lot into Marvin early on, so I had a lot of Marvin here. If you guys are Marvin holders, you know, it makes it really easy for you to start and buy some BNB. Yeah, whatever you can responsibly afford, it's a great time to buy some BNB right now. Everything's down. And you put that in the night swap LP, and then you stake it in there. And uh, we got a really great walkthrough video by one of our, one of our community, blah, excuse me. I cannot talk here. One of our community members, thank you, sorry. Deja Rules, they put together a great video on YouTube. And this would be cool if I shared it with you guys. So I'll link that in there. That shows you exactly how to get started with the, the staking if you're unsure about that. So I have my Marvin, my BNB paired. All right, let's zoom out. And that prints Knight. Okay, so the next swap ecosystem, their DEX token is Knight. And that's what you move around. And the beautiful thing about this is it keeps any kind of sell pressure off of those main pairs. The problem with a lot of staking is if we would pay out in Marvin, you get a ton of people that just stake their Marvin and just dump it on that pulls the price down, pulls the price down. But because we're part of this night swap, it prints out night. Now, so this Marvin BNB, I think it's right around 200% APY right now. When I checked this morning, so you're getting nights, printed night every day. The first thing I do is I roll that night into the night auto compounder. All right. And they have, uh, it's like night compounder. I'll link to it in the lesson, but I roll everything into this night auto compounder right now. Okay. And it builds. It's a beautiful thing about the auto compounder. It takes all of my API rewards and drops it right back in. Just boom, boom. So every day it's building, it's growing. That's that power of that compounding, right? That's that uh, 64 pieces on the chest pour. That's the one penny doubling every day. Compounding my compounding, okay? So I let that build. I let that sit there. Yeah, once it gets up to a uh, bigger number I like, and depending on what the market's doing, things start to take off and yeah, the bag fills up there. Right now, moving into one of one of three things. Night BNB is where I rolled into you first, right? Because this is another auto compounder in the night swap out to some of my night. Put buy some BNB. I pair it there because that's got a pretty good APY right now. I'm pretty bullish on BNB. I think that's going to be a pretty strong token for a while. It's got enough people in there. I don't think it's going anywhere. I think Knight as well is going to be around for a while. I think that's going to grow. So I roll into here. All right. I think that's another 150%, 180% APY right now. You know, it's got a really good APY. So I roll back in there and it builds and it builds. I just leave it. I don't touch this. That's the beautiful thing about the auto compounder. I do not touch, right? Once it goes in here, I leave it. That's my strategy. That's a constraint I put on myself. I don't touch it. I don't need to look at this. This is one of my long-term plays. I let it in there, all right? And this is going to keep building. It's just to keep building. Couple of years from now, this is gonna be a lot. I don't know how much it's gonna be, but it's gonna be a lot. All right. Now the other thing I do is I take some of that night money that auto compounds. Next time I'll throw in the Marvin Ray pool. I love Marvin. You know, I feel good about Marvin. Part of the team. Part of the team because I believe in the project. You know, I know the guys on the team. I believe in Kyle. I believe in Kakai. I believe in his believe in all of those. Guys, I believe in Queen. I think we're all doing the right things to make sure that Marvin lasts uh, for a long time and keeps going up. All right. So I throw some money in there. And I let that build. I let that build because that prints out night as well. Excuse me. Nope, that does not print out night. Sorry. So at conference this weekend, and I am still recovering from that. Let's do that. There we go. That's better. Okay, so the Marvin Raid Pool, what I do is you put Knight in here, so you single side the stake, all right? And it prints out Marvin, all right? It just keeps printing Marvin, keeps printing Marvin. And then I come back, I pair it with that BNB. Yeah, so I take some of that Knight Auto Compounder as well, and I switch it to BNB, all right? So now that Marvin BNB bag 
it's got the 200% APY, that keeps growing. And if that grows, that's more night. Whoops. That is more night. All right. That's more night coming in here. Now remember, this night is auto compounding, so it's growing here. So you're getting more. And the uh, third thing I do with this night auto compounder, you know, I will buy guard and BOSD. This goes up and I split it. You know, it might be $100 I take and I split in guard BOSD. You know, sometimes I might wait a little bit longer, let it build up more. But every so often, I'll break it down because I like guard too. I've been doing a lot of research on guard. I've been really going deep into the Wolf Den ecosystem. I joined the Wolf Den Discord, been following along with the things they're doing. Nick just put an announcement out on some really cool partnerships that they're working on, some different stuff that they're doing. I like that they are really focused on making sure they are keeping up with possible regulations. I'll get, in, I'll get into all that in a little bit, but I'm a believer in guard. So I'm buying guard and BUSD and that prints night. And that night goes back into the auto commander here, right? So you can start to see how all of this is that flywheel effect. This gets bigger, more into here. This gets bigger, right? Into here, this gets bigger, keeps getting bigger. Put money into here, boom, back to here. This gets bigger, this gets bigger, goes in here, this gets bigger, prints out more, gets bigger, all right? So this whole thing just keeps growing and growing over time. And the longer I'm in the market, as long as I follow this strategy, and I don't touch any of this, as long as I don't buy things I don't need, you know, invest what I can't afford. I'm not even gonna write that because this is, that's not making sense, but I just make sure I don't overextend myself. You know, I don't put myself in a position where I ever have to touch this. I can just let this keep building. Yeah, you know, I can follow my strategy every few days, every week, every couple weeks. I move, I move money from one pool to the other. And I take that night, put in here, put in a Marvin, put in the guard BSD, put it back in a Marvin B and B, back in the night. And it's just gonna continue building and building. All right. So this is uh this is my strategy right now. And again, follow your own strategy. They've got tons of different pools in there. If you have more and you're closer to your FU number, they've got some stable coins. And they've got a uh, like BNB, BUSD. And they've got some other ones. There's banana in there. I don't know anything about uh, this banana project, but I've heard people like the banana project. There's an ETH BNB pool. There's cake. There's USDC, BUSD. So there's tons of different stuff that you can be putting your money on, depending on you know how risky you need to be, how close you are, and what you believe in. All right. But I hope this is really starting to show you the power of this night swap ecosystem. I was really excited to, to show this one for you guys and want to make sure this lesson we covered it. All right, I'm going a little bit why I'm bullish on night swap. I'll cover that a little bit more in future lessons. And um, then we'll get into what's going to be coming next. All right, the team has extensive real world business experience. If you go read their white paper and go read the bios about the team, they have a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, right? Some really smart people who have done some really cool things outside of crypto and before crypto that really make me confident that they know what they're talking about, okay? Everything that I'm hearing about them just logically makes sense. You, know, you can easily replace what they're talking about with any other industry. This is asset agnostic. You can do it with real estate. You can do it with other businesses. You can do it with other tokens. Again, if Bitcoin is your thing. You can start buying Bitcoin. You can, maybe you don't believe in guard. That's fine. You don't believe in guard. There are plenty of places where you can stake Bitcoin or Ethereum. Yeah, there's so many other options out there that all work into this, you know, and that's the beauty of night. That's the cool thing about this DEX token is it allows for a certain amount of volatility that you can start buying these other assets without destroying the rest of this, without killing your golden goose. So whatever it is, whatever that macro belief is of yours, you can use this to start funding that, okay? So that's really cool. I really like the fact that they don't, you know, essentially force you to stay within their ecosystem. If you believe in something else, cool, you can take it out of there. That's, that's really important for me. 
they're really focused on community education. You know, if you check out their YouTube channel, if you check out their Medium articles, if you check out their Discord, they're very heavy on education. Just we have been with Marvin, we want to teach you guys different things about the market, different things about crypto. And we haven't been all heightened by Marvin, by Marvin. They're like, really want that education piece in there. And the Wolf Den and Night Swap is doing the same thing. All right. So check those out, read those if you want. And you'll see that doing a great job on educating people. That really makes me confident in their skills and abilities. And really they're, they're good, you know, I guess to say, you know, they're doing good for the world by educating people and making sure everybody else can raise their level of intelligence, making sure everybody else can think better. And I love that. Really love that. So I think that's a cool piece because the more educated the investor in your project, the better your project's going to do. It's not going to have a bunch of people who jeet at the first sign of a downturn. They're going to know their strategy and they're going to hold on to it and create more long-term holders. And I'll come next to life. All right. So the big one, I love these auto compounders. The auto compounders are amazing. I had a busy life. I do a lot of things. So the simple fact that I can come in every few days, every few weeks and just drop something in here, drop something in here and let sit, drop something in here, let sit, come back and go hang out with my son, go play baseball with my son, or go fly my drone, or go take pictures, whatever else I want to do. Spend time with friends, go out to eat. Makes life easy, all right? So those are a few of the, the big high-level things that really make me bullish on Night Swap. And maybe less than four or five, go a little bit deeper on uh, some other aspects of Night Swap. I know they're working on a few big things. I'd like to... Um, Curious to see what they're doing with that before I talk a little bit more on Night Swap and the Wolf Den. But these are these are some of the big ones that stood out on me. Okay, so <clears throat> that's really a really a little bit longer. I wanted to with the little tech issue, so I appreciate everybody who has stuck with me on here. I hope this is making sense for you guys. I hope you guys are seeing. Um, the power of all of this. Next week, we're going to get in a little bit more, or probably on doing like how to do research, how to look at projects, something along those lines, as long as you guys are up for it. Uh, if any of this is not making sense, if you guys want me to touch on anything else or a little bit more clarification on something, make sure you drop it in the question form. Um, again, that'll be linked with this video once I get it edited and put up. So I'm going to, you know what? Let's see, since uh, we still have a few people on, I'm going to open this up. Uh, let's stop sharing my screen. Cool. Sorry, guys, bear with me here. If anybody knows how to let other people talk, or if you just want to unmute yourself, if you got any questions, I will take a few minutes to answer them here. It's good stuff, man. It's great Back, stuff. Kyle, you made it. Lots of, lots of, lots of learning going on, man. I like cool. the thing about this and why these 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 teachings are so important is we, we are in a crazy market right now. It doesn't matter. Every everybody is hurting right now. Let's be honest. And I'll be honest, I don't, it's not going to get any better. And the, the thing that you can do during you okay, Fran? You're like huffing and grunting in the mic. <laughs> Oh, um, um, sorry. I'll meet myself. My, uh, my knee. But the thing is, is that the reason why these lessons are so important and it's really cool for you guys to join in and check these things out is guys, we're in a bear market right now and there is nothing that we can do to uh, stop it. We really can't. And one, it's about just getting your mind right and understanding that what goes down must come up. And when is it going to come up? Not entirely sure. But the big thing is, is that it's staying positive and looking for things that you can leverage your money. And so that's why Fran was talking about the ecosystem is because one of the benefits of being a Marvin holder is Marvin is integrated in these very good ecosystems that give you an ability to earn money just by doing what a lot of people are doing right now. It's just chilling. And the one thing to understand is that no amount of marketing, no amount of technology is going to 
turn a chart around in this market. And so what you can do is arm yourself with information and come up with a strategy to really push through. And for us, from a project standpoint, one of the things that's really cool for us is that this allows us to keep building. This allows us to be strategic. When we do launches, going on different exchanges right now is not the best time to go on an exchange because it'll have zero positive impact on the project. And if it doesn't have a positive impact on the project, it means that the community can't make any money. And we want to protect your guys' investment as best we can, which is why a lot of our marketing wallet is sitting in stables right now so that we're not negatively impacted by what's going on. Because had we not smartly allocated that marketing wallet, we'd be down 50% right now. So the marketing wallet would be worth half of what it is. And so when, when this market starts to turn around, there's a lot of really cool things that we can do. And one of the things when you're looking to identify a solid project, it's a team that it's a team that weathers the storm. People look for stable projects, not ones that just pop up out of nowhere. I know Marvin is going to get a reputation of a community that's really super strong, one that's very active on social media. Man, I was just at Consensus in Austin meeting with a bunch of people and got complimented down there. I travel all over the United States and got compliments from people about the Marvin community. They're talking about strong communities in crypto. And lo and behold, I didn't even have to bring it up. I didn't even have to bring it up. They're like the Marvin Inu community is one of the strongest out there. And this is an analytics company, like a social media analytics company is talking about Marvin at a crypto conference. And there are a lot of eyes on this project because meme coins are an easy way for people to invest in crypto. Why? Because it's like putting money on your favorite sports team. You don't have to really understand a whole lot about the team to support the team. And that's really what makes Marvin so cool is when the market picks back up. Because one thing to understand about the market right now is that people are just scared of crypto. You have new investors who haven't experienced anything like this. So with the market downturn, they're freaking out right now. They don't know what to do. Honestly, this was me when I first started investing in crypto. I experienced my first bear market and I thought I was going to be broke forever. And one day feels like an eternity. One month feels like a lifetime. And then the next thing you know, you wake up one morning and it's so starts a bull run. And it's the most seasoned projects that experience the biggest upside in these bull runs. It's just the truth. You look at, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but like Dogecoin came out in 2013, I believe. I mean, I'm pretty sure 2013. And it just chilled for five years. She seemed dead for about a year. And what happened was, is that the team kept working. The community never gave up. And now it's one of the top ones. And so that's a big thing. That's a huge hallmark of the Marvin community is that we're a community that never gives up. We're a community that never stops working. You, know, you get people that come in here and they, they ask all sorts of questions, but you know what? I haven't left. Kakai hasn't left. We would keep working. We keep working. Despite what happens, we keep working. And that's what makes this community great is there's a lot of people that really care about this project. You have someone like Frank who puts together these educational materials for you guys. Why? Because one, you have to understand Marvin is not the only crypto project out there. And I want to let you guys know that you are more than welcome to invest in other projects outside of Marvin. And we're going to teach you how to identify those good projects because if you diversify your portfolio, it balances things out and it protects you when things go wrong. And so we want the community of Marvin to be some of the most educated crypto investors out there because that's going to be what makes Marvin great. What's going to pump Marvin in the future is that we're going to have a community of people who are very savvy and understand crypto. So no matter, no matter if the market goes up or if the market goes down, the Marvinots are just going to be calm and cool as we continue this journey on to Mars. And so the team's not going to stop working. I know a bunch of them actually just met up in a different part of the world so that they can continue to plan and marketing. You might not see us in the chat every day. I know a lot of you always, like, the daily question is, where is Kyle? Watches the chat every single day. 
I watch what you guys do. But I talk to the team every single day. I talk to the admins just about every day. They always know what I'm up to. And I can tell you that we haven't stopped working. That right now, it's about being methodical. And for those of you who don't know what methodical means, is I'm not going to do things that won't have a positive impact. And right now, there aren't a ton of things that have a positive impact. All we can do right now is be patient. We can be patient. We can be active. We can educate and arm ourselves for when the market turns around. And so these education seminars, these weekly talks that Fran give are very crucial because this is our way as a team of showing you guys that we care, of teaching you how to be smart investors. If you're going to put your money into crypto, you need to know that there is a smart and reasonable way to do it. And we're going to be the ones to teach you because we want to see you guys win. Your money matters to us. We're not concerned with pumping the chart. What we are concerned with is that this project lasts a long time because it's one thing for a chart to go down, but it's even worse if the project just, just goes away. You don't have a chance to win in the long run if a project just stops. And so long as the team is there and continues to work, I can tell you that there's a lot of things that we're working on. We're working on the technology for the play to earn metaverse. Yes, you guys keep talking about it, but BitMart is still in play. I have a very good relationship with BitMart and their exact words are, they didn't want us to just randomly list and then have the market dump. And it's just like I told you guys before, had we listed on BitMart and then the market tanked, we would have been in big trouble. So now we have a huge opportunity that when the market turns around, we can list on BitMart. Contracts are signed, money is paid, we're all good to go. That's, I'm not concerned, like, I'm not concerned at all about the BitMart list. That's, that's good to go. We're waiting for the right time because again, we want that to have a positive impact on our community. We do. And so the NFTs are coming. This downturn has allowed us more of an opportunity to work on the NFTs because why would we sell NFTs if people don't have money, right? If you're down in your investment, it doesn't give you the opportunity to invest in NFTs. And if you can't invest in NFTs, well, then nobody wins. So you have to be smart and sensible. And you guys know I work on much, much bigger projects. You know, Marvin is my passion meme project. And I work with tier one venture capital funds. I work with tier one crypto projects. And I can tell you, we are all taking the exact same approach. We are all taking the exact same approach. The directive that I give portfolio companies within the venture capital fund is just be cool, lay the foundation, use this time to write press releases, use this time to write medium articles. And these are all things that like, if you're, if you're sitting at home right now and you're asking, how can I help the Marvin community? You can help by creating content. You can help by writing articles, talking about what you like about the Marvin community, medium articles. You can contribute to helping build the footprint that is Marvin because the more I want you guys to look at it like this is like when the crypto market starts to kick back up, remember people are scared right now. They're scared because the market keeps crashing. So what's going to happen is they're going to be cautious, right? They're going to be cautious when the market starts to go up because they're going to be like, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I don't know what to invest in because I don't want to invest in a project that is going to, to go down or not going to be around. And so what are they going to do? They're going to look for projects that have withstood the test of time. They're going to look for projects that don't spend their money in an irresponsible manner. Because you guys all saw the market, right? You see it right now. You can go on coin market cap and you can see the market. Can you guys imagine what would have happened if we would have spent our entire marketing budget because people just wanted us to spend money on marketing? Could you imagine that? Our project would be dead, right? Because no amount of marketing can stop what happened to Bitcoin. No amount of marketing can stop what happened to Ethereum. No, there's no amount of money. And so the team, now we have a healthy budget. We're not going to spend it now. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. We're not going to spend a ton of money on marketing right now. But what we are going to do is we're going to be patient. And we're going to pick our spots and our opportunities so that when the market does turn around, 
we're going to have a budget to be able to put forth for marketing so that you guys' investment is protected. And so these are just the little things that we can do now. So don't lose hope. Don't lose the faith. If you get, if you give up on Marvin right now, you might as well just give up on crypto as a whole. Cause what's going on right now is not for the weak hearted. I can tell you guys right now that <laughs> it's embarrassing to say, but like my portfolio is down over a million dollars personally. And Marvin is one of the projects that I'm invested in. Let's just, I'll just be quite honest with you. For those of you who are heartbroken right now about what your portfolios look like, I am right there with you. It's not a fun time. It is not a fun time, but that hasn't stopped me from working. That hasn't stopped me from chatting with the Marvin team every day. That hasn't stopped anything. We're going to keep moving forward. We're going to keep moving forward. You guys will hear me say this. You, maybe you've already heard me, but small steps cover great distances. It doesn't need to be big, huge steps, but just little steps every day. You guys rating a Twitter post. You guys put, making new memes, making new content, putting stuff on YouTube, putting stuff on TikTok. The more recognizable Marvin can be, when people are ready to start putting money back into crypto, we're going to be one of the first things that they think of. And that's all we can do right now is everything that we do right now is going to be what can we do to make Marvin one of the first projects people think about when the bear market's done. So there's three phases of a bear market. We're in the second one right now. So I'm going to tell you guys right now, the whole crypto market is going to get worse before it gets better. I'm here telling you right now, I promise you 100%. The market is going to get worse than it is right now. So be positive. You guys hear me say this all the time. Remember, treat people with love, compassion, and respect, right? Treat people with love, compassion, and respect. Be, cause, be kind because you know what? Hey, like I said, I'm down over a million dollars. I would really have no time for someone to be mean to me. There's no, nothing, nobody can be more mean to me than what my portfolio says right now. And I know there are a lot of you that may not have that much money, but you may have a lot of money invested and it means a lot that is down. And don't be mean, be kind. We're all in this together. Like the reason why I haven't left Marvin is because I believe in this community. It has nothing to do with the money I have invested in this project. It has everything to do with you guys as the team. I fucking love the team. I fucking love the team. I love the community. I talk about you guys every chance I get. There's, there is just, even though I work on other projects and big projects, I can promise you every single one of those people know about Marvin and they know I'm involved in the project. And they know I love the shit out of you guys. And so this is, there's something special here. There really is. If I didn't think so, I would have been gone. I would have never joined the project. And so you guys are amazing. This community is absolutely incredible. We're going to continue to fight until the very last second. We're going to continue to fight. And times are tough right now, but they're tough for everybody. They are tough for everybody. And the stronger your community is, the easier it's going to be to emerge from the ashes once this market starts to recover. Because I promise you it's going to recover. 100% it's going to recover. And I also promise you it's going to get worse before it gets better. And so we just stick together. We stick together because like I've told you guys, this is not the first time that I've been through this. So am I upset that my money is gone? Sure, but it's going to come back. It's going to come back and there's going to be more because every project's going to moon. It's just going to happen. That's how it's going to be. And so the biggest thing is going to be patient. It's going to be showing up to these teachings. Definitely. Frank has got a ton of experience. He's got a lot of knowledge to share with you guys. And he's teaching you ways to protect your money. He's teaching you ways to make more money. And it should be pretty obvious that we put Marvin in a position to win. We want Marvin to win at all times. And you know what? I've said it before and I'll say it again. Sometimes the decisions that I make <laughs> might not be the most popular. That's okay. I'm not here to, I'm not here to win any popularity contests. You all know that I'm not here to be the most popular one, but I am the one who takes it very personally that you got, that we create, that we put Marvin in a position to win. And so might not always be the sexiest decisions, but I trust me, every decision that this team makes is with you guys in mind. So that's all I've got. I didn't, I really, honestly, I didn't even plan on talking.
I really didn't. I heard, so uh, you guys don't know this, but Frank and I are actually best friends in real life and he came to visit me. So I was listening to this like awesome chat. He's downstairs. I'm upstairs in my office. And I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? I forgot. I had a meeting. And so I, then I jumped in for the last half. And I was like, you know what? I'll say, I'll say, hey, because it's been a minute. But I just want to let you all know, is keep the positivity. We are working hard. We are working very hard behind the scenes. And I do watch this chat every single day. So for those of you who are always asking where I am, I'm literally reading your message as I say that, as you're typing that. I just choose not to say anything. I hope you guys are having an amazing day, evening, whatever time it is. But keep the faith, Marvinants. This Mars mission isn't over. I hope you guys realize that. This Mars mission is not over. This is what they call turbulence. This ride might have just gotten a little bumpy. But don't worry, we've been on this ride before. So, Frank, this is your show. This is your party. I'll let you wrap it up how you want, but I'm out. Well, thanks for jumping in, Kyle. Yeah, for those asking who was talking over me earlier, I think that might have been Kyle you were hearing on one of his meetings. But appreciate uh, you jumping in and sharing your words of wisdom as always. Kyle's doing some awesome things, some crazy things. I'm lucky enough to get to see some of that stuff firsthand as we go. And y'all are in such good hands with this team, with all the connections and all the knowledge that Kyle has, Kakai, his the rest of them. We're here to stay. We're gonna send Marvin to Mars. Whoever wants to come along for the ride, get wealthy in the process. We'd love to have you. And I'll leave it at that for this week. And we'll see you next Sunday. Hey guys. Thank you.